Right, so today's video does need a bit of backstory behind it. At the end of the FM21 life cycle, I got together with a couple of football manager creators to do a versus mode, my Aberdeen team that I had in FM21 versus their best team from FM21. You may have seen a few of these come out just before FM22 was released, and today's video is essentially one of those. I recorded a video with Zealand, everyone's favorite football manager content creator. Thing is, we recorded this on a Wednesday night, and then less than 12 hours later, FM22 was released, which took complete priority for me. So this was put on the back burner for a little while, and then it turned out a little while turned into a long while. But I have strategically decided that this is the right time to release a video with Zealand, right in the middle of uh, December ad revenue. Gotta do it for the grind. So essentially, today's video is Z and I talking about scouting in Football Manager and some of the techniques that we use to scout players in the game, as well as the big match between my Aberdeen team and his Oriental Dragon FC team. Also, before we jump into things, I've got to ask you, today's video, please could you drop a like on it for me, would massively appreciate it. And also, we are getting closer and closer and closer to 30,000 subscribers. So if we could, uh, push it towards the 30,000 figure, that would be absolutely wonderful. If we can get it by the end of the year, that would be even better. Also, comment down below some of your favourite scouting techniques as well. I'd love to know what you guys think makes a good scouting programme in Football Manager. Right, so here we are with Zealand. Zealand, how are things with you today? Ah, oh, they are, they're wonderful. I am excited to do that. I've actually never done this before. I don't know if you know that. Oh, I'm taking your versus mode virginity then. This is good. Yes. <laughs> a big pause there, a big pause there. You don't seem quite so sure as I am, at least. But uh, you've been managing Oriental Dragon right on your stream. Tell me a little bit about the save. Right, well, we started with a uh, classic, you know, the way you pick your save. I went into the lower leagues uh, of Portugal and found a team. There's like 96 teams in the, the Portuguese lower league. It's one of those things. And I found a team called Oriental Dragon. And I was like, well, I just have to do this. I don't know why there's a team called Oriental Dragon FC in the fourth division of Portugal, but like, that's where we're going. Obviously, you started off in the fourth tier of Portuguese football. You've risen up very quickly. What, you're in 2033, right? So a very quick rise up. Your transfer policy then, how has that been? And how have you managed to bring the players in to so quickly get yourself up the ranks? It was challenging at the beginning because we had a club requirement to sign a significant number of Chinese players because oh, wow. I, I didn't know that at the time, really. I just saw the name and I was like, I'm starting as this team, but they were owned by Chinese owners and not wealthy ones. So it wasn't like we were spoiled for money. They just wanted to bring in Chinese players and develop them. The majority of my youth intake every year is Chinese. That has not changed through the entire save. And I think it's awesome. Uh, so we just get like a large dose of Chinese youth national team players every year. It's so cool. Yeah. Uh, so they, that's like preserved in the club culture, but when we got promoted from the second division to the first division, Liga Nas, the club got bought by like a local investor. And so we removed the Chinese requirements. So up until the first division, uh, we didn't really buy anybody. We It was all free transfers and trials and finding players that were going to help elevate the team. And once we got into the first division, it was like all of a sudden the 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 weight was lifted off you know we tried to we sign and develop chinese players and we did have like a chinese national team legend on our team for a long time named he shen uh, just as an homage to our history but we also had the ability to go out and sign a lot of other players and i would love to say it was like a genius stroke in scouting uh that that turned the tide for us but there's one player we signed in our first season in the top flight who is now the all-time appearance leader for the club and we found him just because of curiosity. I don't think you can o overstate the importance of curiosity in this scouting stuff because we were playing a game and this guy that we were playing against, we were like, hmm, man, this guy's pretty good. And then we went and looked at him and he was, he was 16. And we were like, oh, okay. So we went, put an inquiry and they asked for a million dollars, which at that time was the entire transfer budget. And we just went, okay, and gave it to them. And now he won the European Golden Boy. Uh, he is the all-time club leader in appearances. He is the all-time club leader in assists. He's got over 70 goals for the club. And so the, one of the biggest gets of the save was just sheer curiosity. Like setting up my scouting for the other team. This guy's 16. 
wow, he's actually playing really well against us. We should buy him. And then just came over in the summer and that was it. Uh, a lot of the other guys were end of contract as well. That seems to be, uh, I've gotten into a habit of really taking flyers where if I get an early scouting report back on somebody that's end of contract and they have a chance, right? They have a chance to be five-star potential, but it's in a big range. And so you don't know. I just offer them the contract anyways. And some of them, you completely strike out. They end up not being good. And then other ones uh, we have, uh, in my opinion, the best player in the save, which uh, is something that I think we're going to we're gonna go over, uh, is Ansi Karolainen. We got him from for free from Finland. We got a guy named Jason Serna for free from Colombia, who's got 20-something caps for the Colombia national team at 23. Uh, like guys that just end up being pure world class that we got an into contracts because somebody else was slipping up and we happened to throw a contract at them before anybody else had fully scouted them. So it's been a little unorthodox. Normally it's like, we'll scout South America and Brazil and Argentina and just sign those guys. Uh, we have two Argentinians and no Brazilians in, in our team right now. Wow, that is such a, a cool and a different way of doing all the scouting stuff, right? Because for me, very much with Aberdeen, it's been scout Brazil, bring in Brazil. And at one point we had seven players playing for Aberdeen who were in the starting lineup for the Brazilian national team. Oh, that is oh, hilarious. That is insane. It's like completely other direction. Like it's weird for me. It's the, this is the first save for me where I you, you always at least dabble in Brazil, right? We just haven't found the right player at the right time. And so we just built the team out a different way. I, I guess that's it, isn't it? It's just trying to, it's adapting to what the situation is. And I think that's the biggest thing that people maybe don't quite do in football manager. I think they have their rigid ways of thinking, I've got to sign players from a certain area, otherwise they're going to be rubbish. When really, if you just spread your wings a little bit, be more curious, like you say, you're going to find those gems in other places. I found uh, I found one, one of the players that is still around the team, we found because we were looking at Olympic qualifying in Africa, I think. And there was like this 17-year-old on the Ugandan U23s. And we were like, you know, what What the heck? Like, we'll throw a scout in. And then, you know, a month later, we're buying the guy for $5 million. He's the most expensive Ugandan signing ever. Because he was playing in Denmark at the time. He actually switched nationalities, so I'm a little mad at him. Oh, Sw yeah, that's uh, annoying. He switched. Well, he was born in Uganda, but he, would, like, came up through the Danish academy system. And so when they Denmark went to the World Cup, they called him up and he switched. But it, it happens. He had 19 caps for Uganda, senior national team, and then switched over to what, senior team. That's meant. I didn't realize you could swap after you'd already played. You like, have one. But... You have a one-time switch. As far as, that I've seen people do that before, but he that that was the most painful one. 19 caps for Uganda, and then he switched over to Denmark for the World Cup. Yeah, I'd never heard that before. That is actually quite painful. But I've learned something today, which is quite good. I've learned something. Thank you for that. Funny thing is, Look. Uganda's actually, with this dynamic youth rating, that's going to be an FM22. The, and Uganda has a large enough population for you to technically make them like a footballing power, if you wanted oh, to. They yes. have 25 yeah. million people. That's like double the Netherlands. Yeah, that is big, to be fair. And like, if you if you start, well, I say if you start with a, you might have to download a database for this one, but if you start with a Ugandan club and build up those facilities, right? That is, that is going to be a game changer. I cannot wait to see how effective the dynamic youth ratings are going to be. I really hope it's as good as what we're all hoping for. I think that it'll probably move slower than we're hoping it does. It usually does, right? It obviously is going to move, I mean, unless it's broken. I, that's the thing. I'm almost nervous to try and do a save where you can build up the youth rating, uh, uh, where like the point is to build up the youth rating of a team because we just don't know quite how effective that's going to be. There's going to be a whole lot of things that would also need to be dynamic. You've got like the importance to the FA, importance to the country. That's one of the things, hidden attributes, isn't it, right? Um, there's also like economic factors as well that get put into there. So there's an awful lot actually that probably goes into that youth rating and how how quickly it can build up. So it depends if they're dynamic as well, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I don't think game importance is dynamic yet. I understand why they wouldn't want to make game importance dynamic because uh, can you project that India is all of a sudden going to really fall for the sport, right? Like it's a harder thing to to change. And then infrastructure is a point you bring up that's usually just when you're trying to sign players. And they, they go, well, we're not satisfied with the infrastructure. And that would happen in Belarus sometimes, which is why I had to sign yeah. people from not first world countries to come to Belarus. <laughs> because <laughs> like Americans would look at the Belarusian League and be like, eh, and they would just not go. And so you had to bring people in from uh, that's there's so many elements of realism in, in FM. I think that's why we fall, yeah. we fall in love. And that's why we, we end up with teams way. like these. 
Exactly, exactly. Who would have thought it's going to be Aberdeen versus Oriental Dragon in one of the biggest games of FM21 ever? Yes! It's going to be fantastic. Let's talk about your Oriental Dragon squad then. Uh, three players I want to pick out that are standouts for you. Who are you going to pick first? Right, the first one is Ansi Karlainen, who is the Finn midfielder. Uh, 6'3", 190 pounds, an absolute force in the box, which is something that you would not think as a central midfielder is incredibly valuable. This man scores about 15, 20 goals a season, and two-thirds of that is with his head. It's really incredible how, and especially in big games, how something about big games and the way teams align, he just ends up unmarked in the box and just wins headers, puts them away. Gifted, gifted player. But I think more importantly, unique. Because of his size and his jumping reach, he adds so much to the game because he doesn't take away anything else. He's fast. He's quick. He has incredible creativity and first touch and passing and vision. He just adds that extra height element that makes him nearly unstoppable. Just a super fun player to have. Yeah, this guy looks insane, actually. Like, particularly those physicals. Like, 19 jumping reach is mental. I mean, if... <sighs> If he had his tackling up a little bit and marking up a little bit, this guy would be a decent centre-back or target man as well. Like, he is so versatile. I do like... So what role do you play him normally? I, I have played him as a central midfielder on attack for okay. the vast majority of the last two years uh, on the left side. And so he... What happens is the ball will get wide to the right and then it will get swung in and he is just kind of waiting at the back post to to touch it home. But at the same time, if he ends up on the corner of the box in one of those type of positions where a Metsala would usually get where it, you know, he receives the ball and he can either make a play and pass or make a play and shoot, he obviously can do either of those things. Uh, you know, he, he dribbles well and he's smart, right? The 17 decisions, also 17 off the ball. I feel like that really helps the heading too because he he's not only huge, but he gets open and... uh he's just he's one of those guys i received a 125 million dollar offer for him and i said no wow yeah because well, I, I, like, I can see why yeah obviously you'd love to have 125 million dollars but at the same time i'm trying to win everything and i just don't think there's somebody that's going to help me win everything much more than this guy that's the thing like in the earlier parts of your saves, like obviously selling the when those sort of bids come in, you can sell those players for that sort of money to improve the rest of the team. But when you've got someone who literally is the best in the world at what they do, right? It's you can't put a price on it when you're trying to win everything. Yeah, you cannot. You really, you really, when you're hunting Champions Leagues and unbeaten seasons and those sorts, of, those sorts of things, the memories that last a lifetime. Uh, I there were a lot of other people on our team that we would sell for 120 million dollars. Basically, almost everybody, but we would not sell Ansi Karolainen for for under 20 million. He's so unique. I don't really think I've got a player that I could probably or properly compare with him. I guess if I was going to do anyone, it might be Baptiste Bont because I think they're pretty similar. So I'm going to go onto the player comparison now and uh, find Baptiste Bont. So we can just have a look at these two side by side. Uh, yeah, they are really. They're actually quite similar players looking at the polygon. But I think your guy is better in the air, obviously. He's slightly better physically, vision-wise, and technically. He, your guy's better. Your guy's a better player. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think Ansi's, Ansi's definitely better. Boy, this guy, uh, where this guy has him beat, though, is, I think, the... <sighs> I want to say, uh, the, I, I don't have a better phrase for it, the ticking over midfielder, like the person that can, he's very smart and he's a great yes. team player. And so he can, he is going to execute. You're not going to get mad at this guy as often for going out on his own and doing something stupid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, he's got really good teamwork, Baptiste Bond. 17 teamwork, 18 vision, uh, 16 work rate. I love that sort of high mental attributes in my team. Um, he's got loads of them to be fair, but so does your guy. But I think I think Ansi takes it. Looking at, I mean, I've got I'm looking at comparing the attributes right now for centre mids on attack, and yeah, I think I'm going to have to give you this one. And you're paying him so much less than <laughs> I am as well for Baptiste Bont. Really? How much? How much are you paying him? Uh, two hundred seventy-five thousand pound a week. Oh, it's eighteen mil a year. Yeah, I think I'm paying Ansi what seven a year. 
something like that. Yeah, less than yeah, half, and it's, for sure. And I bought him for a hundred million as well. So, oh wow! But it was a it was a final season thing. You know, we had to make a big push for that final. We're looking to try and win six trophies in our final season. So we had to make a big push. Had to make a big statement, and he was the the statement signing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him as a player. It's just the same reason that Ansi's unique. It's just wholly unique because normally you have a player that's either a great passer or a great athlete or a super creative player with the 20 flair or they're just really tall, but he just kind of, he, he just has it all going on. Right. Okay, Ben Z, who's the next player you want to talk about? So the next guy we're looking at is somebody that I is less attribute impressive and more impressive in their accomplishments, and that would be Boisen Philander. Okay. I've got him, right winger. Right, Boisen Philander. Yes, he is a he's center forward for us, also plays on the right wing, is a South Africa's hero. You can't see it on this touch thing. He has 29 appearances and 27 goals for South Africa. Ooh. He led them to a bronze medal at the Olympics and won them the AFCON, and he's 22. That's mental. That is so, so good. <laughs> he's, he's also another one of the... We bought him for under a million dollars. Uh, he's one of those guys that when they're 16 years old, you put an offer in on, and then when they're 18, they join, and you're like, well, I, they could be good. They could not be. He ended up obviously being a very good player. He won African Footballer of the Year over the past season. Uh, there are two awards for African Footballer of the Year. He won them both. Just an incredibly productive player. He won FIFA Under-21 Men's Player of the Year uh, nationally, internationally. He won... I don't know if he won the next gen too. He's a very, very highly decorated player. Even though weirdly, yeah. I feel like when you look at him, the attributes don't suggest that level of achievement. I was about to say, I'm looking at the attributes and there's nothing there that is like hugely standout, right? He runs fast and he dribbles well, good at free kicks. Other than that, you're not really looking at anything amazing i guess he played more as an inside forward right with his 14 finishing as opposed to a 10 crossing yeah it, he play plays it, we play him as an advanced forward or a complete forward yeah, yeah. just up at the top okay. i think what makes him so dangerous is that he's not on and where everything is at an elite level but he has elite physical gifts and he has 18 technique and so he has a i, I would assume a really high floor with all of his technicals and then he's just pretty darn good at everything else for a center forward, he is very solid as a passer uh, and just intelligence-wise for uh, somebody that is required to finish a lot. He's got decent composure, touch, finishing. Right, but there's Sometimes we get frustrated with him, he'll just miss chances, but he's scored over 20 goals a season in the last three years. So it's somebody that can put the ball in the net, somebody that can create for others. He is a little frustratingly short, but he's got good stamina, he works hard, and even though he's not particularly tall... He's not weak. It, it, I think it's a balanced thing. And then he had a good start to his career with Oriental Dragon and just took off from there. But he has completely won the center forward spot against all comers. Anybody else we've brought in, including a $40 million signing that is now riding the bench because this guy holds down the forward spot. Amazing. I always note as well, like South Africa always seems to produce some really good players in game. I've always found some really solid picks up from uh, South Africa. Um, really good value for money as well. So I don't know what it is about South Africa, but it's definitely a country that you need to be scouting out. That you should. There's just certain areas. And Southern Africa is not one of the ones I normally recommend, but I've had a ton of success in Southern Africa. I have sold, I've sold two members of the South African national team outside of Boys and Philander for a combined total of $45 million. And so I've had a lot of success bringing in three different South Africans and then and then moving two of them on and Boysen is just too good uh, at this point to, to let go. So I've got a player that I can compare with uh, with Boysen and that is Evie Kath D. Fothera from My Save who recently became the starting striker. We had a guy called Sebastian Varela who was scoring 40 goals a season and then one season just decided I don't really fancy scoring anymore. So we just swapped him over with uh, Evie Kath D. Fothera who was coming through and he was fantastic, getting pretty decent goals in the league and the Champions League and really helped us out massively. And I'm comparing with two players right now and they are so similar. So I can similar. See that. I can see that. This guy's a, you know, he's a better passer, but he doesn't have the agility or the pace, but he's got more strength. But he, it, 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 this, is, this is tight. This is definitely tight. 
Yeah, I'm just looking across the attributes right now and cause it's surprising because for a striker, I always like to have players with really high finishing and, and pretty decent composure as well. But neither neither Evie or Boyson have particularly great finishing. So I'm not quite sure. They just need to take their chances so well because he was saying he scores, what, 20 plus goals a season. So does Evie Kath. Yeah. But the finishing is, is, is low and it's normally a red flag for me. But um, after I finished the save, I did a, you know, 20 years in the future sort of thing to see where everyone ended up. And this guy ends up developing and then going on to win the Ballon d'Or. So obviously he's got some pedigree and goes on to do some great things in the future. But it's very similar. You look at Boyston and you look at um, you look at Evicath and you look at the attributes and think they're not that great. But they obviously have great results in game. That's the thing is I don't know if finishing has ever been as valuable as we all assumed that it was because there were so many different attributes that affect your ability to put the ball in the net. You know, if you have 20 finishing, but other, every other thing is bad, you're not going to be finishing your dinner all too often regardless. And so being just a good player uh, i think mental things play into that i think technique plays into it too being able to strike the ball well uh in in an organized way all the time both of these guys are very technical players and being an athlete i see boys in at least a couple times a season actually physically go all the way around a goalkeeper and then walk it in uh, at the very least take an extra touch with his I mean, athleticism and ability to control the ball, take an extra touch to create a really easy angle to just pass the ball into the back of the net instead of trying to shoot around them. The, the, the way the match engine works in FM21, you just don't need to have super high finishing to score a ton of goals. Yeah, I think you must be nailed on with that one. Uh, I do agree, actually. I think finishing must be less important right now. I think... I think people massively overlook the mental attributes when it comes to strikers. I think that's what I've done traditionally as well. I've always just gone for big finishing and not so much mental attributes. But this guy's really taught me that mental attributes are so much more important. He's got stupidly high anticipation, composure, decision making, off the ball, work rate. They're the ones highlighted right now. But actually looking at them, they're both really high for both players. They get great returns. So mentals are a big part of being a striker. Who knew it? Yeah, you, who Martin. who knew that in both we both at a world class level, which I think we safely say both our teams are obviously at a world class level. Having strikers that are very comfortable passing opens opens the game up a lot because the runs are more dynamic than ever in football manager. And so your midfielders and fullbacks and wingers will show up in real goal scoring positions. So having somebody that can pick them out just opens up so much more for your team than somebody that is a poacher. So after this. Well, we kind of got into a discussion about, somehow, uh, the US men's national team for a good, I want to say 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And if we include that in the video, today's video will be far too long. It's long already. It's going to be far too long if we include all of that. So, I mean, it could come out as a standalone video at some point, potentially. But uh, just know that we spoke about that for 20 minutes, and that's why there's now suddenly a bit of an abrupt cut between us talking about players and getting straight into the game between Aberdeen and and Oriental Dragon FC. For what because obviously Versus is meant to come in twenty twenty two for like later on in twenty twenty two on it the full is. fat version of it is. them. It's exciting. And I imagine that is I I mean you spoke to them, didn't you? Have they said what it's for? I imagine it's gonna be like a competitive thing, right? With rankings, that's why they're doing it. I <laughs> we don't get any information on that, but I, I hope we're talking leaderboards and yes, interna international online football manager competition. We will see. But I know that if they're not just instituting it in the game right away, right, it has to be something different than, oh, I left my game audio on. Ow, my ears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it has to be something different than the touch versus mode, which, of course, we're on now. Yeah, it has to be different. It's got to, the reason they're doing it and delaying it to 2022 surely because it's got to have that competitive element to it are you playing away at aberdeen today is this your stadium with the one open side? Uh, i think it's neutral i think it said it was being played in uh the am um, not amex the aviva stadium in ireland oh so. okay 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 i i've already tweaked my set pieces and everything we've got the right boys in oh, I'm brilliant excited. I'm so excited. i'm looking at your formation it's, it looks very defensive to me i can see why you've kept so many clean sheets <laughs> that's what a lot of people have said but it really is quite creative. You'd be surprised. It, it creates some really beautiful goals. We will likely hold on to the ball so much because 
Cerna and Vimon are gifts. And then Katsiki's just free to just run people over. And you've already okay. you've already met Nikolaus. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, is that, Come that on. Wasn't even oh I wanted it to be the I, big guy. Uh, yeah, so did I, but it's Evie Cathy for Thera instead he's got his actual real name because nicknames don't carry over. But yeah, if it were really Demansic, that'd be quite good. I think he's probably on the near post or something. But uh but yeah, I like that. All that talk and then suddenly first highlight goal for me. You love to see it. Yeah, uh, well uh <laughs> We are a very tall team too, so that's that's disappointing to me that we've uh, that yeah. we conceded there. We we right. surely the surely not. Oh, another come on. one. I think I think Demantic got his head to it, and then it sort of got blocked by one of your tall blokes, and then it just falls nicely for my Greek god, uh, Vangelis Alexandros, I think, which is actually his real name. I which think is this really is cool. cleared. Yes, Duarte cleared this off Alexandros, so I would like no credit to be given on this one. Uh, my okay, player, my okay. player cleared it off, Alexandra. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, love I love the confusion it. sometimes when players just try and spank it somewhere. And it just hits someone. Yeah, uh, uh, he really, he really it. did just try and spank that free of free of the goal and just blasted it off of Alexandra's. Well, that's just so, disappointing. Uh, there's, there's really nothing in this game. No, it's been pretty quiet so far. Just two set pieces. That's it. Three and shots and mostly. Uh, what we've, we're, we're quite good at. Demand is just though, a large showing man. Showing his skills. Oh, oh my god, that is a goal. For, <laughs> I was not expecting that. This is I just uh, this is all just wonderfully orchestrated. I, I couldn't even. That's uh, Katsiki's. <sighs> I'd love to claim it's straight for training ground, but I don't do the training. So uh, my assistant manager's got that one into them, maybe. And already the uh, tactics are being tweaked. Now, well, they're being tweaked because the tactic carried over from my last game. So I was wondering why Katsiki's followed him instead of Kernan, who's supposed to be the center back there. Uh, but Katsiki's uh, had, an, yeah, he had yeah, an individual yeah. player mark left over from the last match I'd played. In, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, in the last... Oh, God, what is that? <laughs> I mean... The sad thing is as well, Vangelis Alexandris is playing by accident. He's not meant to be on the pitch right now. It's meant to be Jan Cavalcanti instead. But uh, he's got his hat-trick. So he was, I can't believe this. Yeah, this is mental. Uh, that's Belgium's best centre-back that just got minced on that play. Just got bodied there. Yeah, well, you, I mean, you just step right around him. You got five shots and four goals. It really, I, I feel like I've done something to anger the FM gods today, and I, I don't know what that is exactly. I've now conceded yeah, as many goals as I have the entire Portuguese league season. Rather remarkably. Um, <laughs> that is saying something. Yeah. That really is saying something. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, like, what do you do in this situation? But you're never in this situation. No, it's not a I, thing. No, I'm, I'm never in this situation. Um, oh, yeah, that's, stop, I have a stop. feeling this is going to go in, too. It is. He's already course. dead. He's already that's, dead, lads. Please. That's, that's, this is really actually unbelievable. Like, I don't know what the odds were on this. Uh, but it, it really is spectacular. Which I, I don't know if I'm going to change anything. I think I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, I mean, why not? Let's. We want ten. We want. I can't believe this myself. But uh, it's it's just uh, it's just ping. I mean, I. It's unlucky more than else, really. I suppose. Actually, looking at that replay, but the th the thing is as well, right? Um. The thing is, I've completely forgot what I was going to say. I had it in my head. It's gone. It was going to be something really good and clever as well, I feel. And it's gone. What was I, I just I, I keep thinking it's my highlight too. And then it just gets ripped <laughs> yeah, in the I other know. direction. I'm like, okay, now we're going to start to put our put our pride back. I'm pretty sure you would have scored two goals on that play. Yeah, yeah, we should have done. Should have done. But but like we compared the players. Like the, the players are, are so, so balanced. If not, you know, some of those key players better in your half and better, you know, better for you. So how it's just all... I mean, look at that as well. It's also huge luck on my part. Six shots, five goals. I mean... Well, and the, the, to be honest, <laughs> it's just... It's just one It's just one of those things. I mean, it is obviously a pretty... abhorrent deviation from... Yeah. From, from, from the expected. I, I think the... You've... What, you have the set-piece goal off a free kick, which you always love to get, and I'm never going to discredit the ability to create those because, you you know, you yep. bring in tall players and you have a good free kick taker. Uh, then you have the clearance off of the guy while we're trying to defend yeah. the corner 
the last goal was that deflection and then alexandra's just yes. playing the game of his life really having two chances yeah. and just taking both of them tremendously against very and good look, defenders yeah looking on the xg like graph as well like every goal there's a very small increment in the xg so it's just a lot of luck i feel we're, we're, we're getting here but the bottom but, line is you're now up five nothing and alexandra says a hat trick on uh yeah on oriental dragon and, and that's something he can write to his grandchildren about in the future you know he scored a hat trick against the great oriental dragon of uh, fm21 I gotta make a, uh, gotta make a couple changes. Okay, I think I might also bring on. I might take Vangelis Alexandra off because he wasn't meant to play. I want to bring uh, Jan Cavalcanti on, who's won three Ballon d'Ors in my save. Oh um, well. So, he's a uh, Brazilian that we wanted for a long, long time. Signed him as a striker, and uh, played him as a striker, and he was kind of all right. But then we sort of decided that he was going to be better as a shadow striker instead. Move him to that position instead. And he got like 45 goals for like three years in a row or something. Oh. Like that. oh. And that was close. That would have been nice, Boysen. That would have been nice. Would have felt a little better there, Boysen, if we'd been able to put that away. Yeah, oh, I want to see his acrobatics. I want to see him round my keeper. I want to see it in action. Like yeah, he, he does. He, he does do that. Uh, he decided to take that one first time, which normally ends up being a good. Oh come on, Cerna! That's eight. That's what eighteen passing and eighteen vision will get you right there. Is that terrible <laughs> yeah. pass? So here's the boy Yan Cavalcanti. Who I, is, I, uh, you know, if I had to, oh come on, really? <laughs> oh God! I say if I if I had to pick a defender to to go up against him, it would be Coonan. He just uh, yeah he gave up the in line and then. You know, still probably what would be considered a small chance at that kind of angle. It just uh, I mean, finds a way. It, does it bounce off the... Either way, it's it bounced the, off the post it hit the, the keeper. Po it and... hit the post. Somehow it didn't hit the keeper at all. It hit the post and just went to, to Neve, who's got two of those now. All right, yeah, Jens uh, Neve also a very good player. Let's just, let's just switch some things up. Up top, we're going to take Silva off for the Milo Van. Milo Van Sarovic. Normally, I would make a honking noise and say uh, all aboard the Milo van, but we are losing by six, so. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not got quite the same effect, I suppose, has it? No, it no, this. not really. All right, uh, that was that was lovely. Okay. There's one back. Five There's to go, back. boys. Five to go. Never say never. Never say never with half an hour to go. Uh, yeah, what is the, the worst, like... FMing you've had like for, for me for example I was playing in the Spanish Cup with uh, Red Oviedo we were 3-1 up in the 90th minute 94th minute comes around we've lost 4-3 that that's pretty and spectacular no I've it was I would say the worst FMing I ever had is with Bate in the f eight years into the save so we are a regular Champions League group stage team kind of hoping to get into the knockout stages every year at that level and we showed up and we just well, <laughs> it was it was pretty remarkable actually we lost in the playoff to a team from serbia it was like vojvodina not yeah, yeah. red star not partisan we lost champions league third qualifying round it actually wasn't even the playoff the next year this is how good that team was we lost on away goals. It was 2-2. Two, two. We ended up losing on away goals. Yeah. We won the Champions League the next year. The whole oh, thing. Oh, no. <laughs> so you want to you talk about how hard you have to get FM to lose in the third qualifying round of the Champions League with a team that is clearly good enough to go actually win the Champions League, right? Yep, 100%. Just remarkable. So on the road, we didn't score. It was a nil-nil draw. And then yeah. at home, our star striker got sent off with a straight red in the third minute. Oh, you hate to say it. And we we were still up two to one until like five minutes to go, and they scored a volley from outside the box. Oh, that's and made it two two. And so they you know they played a two two essentially eleven v ten in the second leg after one of those like we have thirty five shots and they have three, but it yeah. ends zero zero at their place and so it was it was i was in shock i actually it took me a couple days to stream again i was so 
I bet it did. I bet it did. Because it, I knew the team, you know, you know your team is that good and it just doesn't uh it doesn't happen. Well, this has been quite the uh quite the show by Aberdeen. Here. I can't believe the scoreline here. It's I mean, I feel bad. I've invited you on here and we've they've done this to you. They've 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 shown no manners. They've not been polite. They've not done anything nice. They've just come here and said the US men's national team suck and then beat you 6 1. The, the thing is, I know my team was talented enough to hang in this game. So maybe we just, yeah, point the the, we just have to point the finger at the manager, right? I mean, we're the greatest yeah, team in the history it. of the Portuguese league. This is a team that went to the Champions League semifinals two years ago, quarterfinals before that, right? A Wagle's heartbreak in the round of 16 against Roma, but we out XG'd them to the moon. The Yeah, this is a very good team. We just got I mean, manhandled today by the Scots. That's it, isn't it? Well, as you say Scots, it's mostly Brazilians who have got Scottish as a second nationality, <laughs> uh, I must say, to be fair. We've got a bit of an enclave or exclave, whichever way around it is, in in Aberdeen for Brazil. We've got, uh, it, after Brexit, it's a special custom zone as well now, so we just get the work permits cut out. You know, it's all, all, right. it's all, it's all perfect like that, clearly. That must be what it is. Beautiful cookie cutter <laughs> situation. I understand. Well, Zealand, I know it's uh, not the scoreline that's that's great, but thank you very much for coming on. It's been great to have you here today. Outside Where of the, can... yeah, outside of the actual game, it's really just a couple kicks in the teeth on Oriental Dragon because we know FM Twenty Two is coming out, and so we know we're never going to win the Champions League with ODFC, even though we accomplished all these great things. And that yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. That happened yesterday. We lost like a heartbreaker <sighs> to Roma yesterday, and yeah. then today I come on here. And I'm like, well, now I mean, I'm sitting here like, okay, I'm going to be able to show the quality of the team and that we're at the level of, you know, your Aberdeen team that's won a couple champions, champions leagues. And we're looking at the players and we think, okay, yeah, we're there. We just didn't show up today. We, we got to go back to the drawing board. We didn't show up today. Yeah, we come back stronger. That's what we like to say, back <sighs> stronger. Uh, so where can where can people find you for FM22 then? Where are you going to be putting content out? Oh, obviously, the, the Zealand YouTube channel. Uh, there's also a Zealand Live channel. So if you don't have an opportunity to catch Tom or I's streams, but my streams at least will be on the Zealand Live channel. There'll be edited down versions of them, 20, 30 minutes bite-sized from each stream so you can keep up with what's going on. And then twitch.com.tv uh, slash uh, Zealand because... The guy that owns Zealand wants to sell it to me, and I hate that entrepreneurial spirit. So thank you very much to Zealand for taking some time to create a video with me. It was really good fun to uh, film this back, I mean, a good months ago now, if I'm honest with you. And it's taken a while for me to uh, find the time to put this out with all the FM22 stuff going on and things like that. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. A bit of a longer one today as well, a bit more stripped back. Uh, it's kind of more of a discussion than anything else, I suppose, uh, rather than, I don't know, a nicely edited up slick bit of filming and, and video. It's kind of more of a discussion. It could be a podcast, essentially, this one. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it either way. And uh, hopefully we'll have plenty more collaboration with other foot manager creators coming out soon. So, of course, remember to drop a like on today's video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here as we try and get to 30,000 subscribers. And would love it if you guys could leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Until next time, have a wonderful evening. I'll see you soon. Goodbye.